hi all and welcome to a new video. In this one we will have a look at frame generation that Nvidia and AMD develop for gamers. But what does frame gen do? Frame generation is a technique that creates frames at a desired output resolution thus reducing CPU bottlenecks but increasing the overall latency. Nvidia's solution is available in more games as AMD just released it with the promise to be integrated in more titles than the two at the time of its release. One such title that supports AMD's frame generation is Forspoken. When enabling frame gen with FSR quality, the game seems to be smooth, but it doesn't feel snappier. It looks like AMD's solution works well in action, as it didn't manage to see any artifacts while in battle in this game. I'm using the 4080 here. The biggest selling point is that it also works on Nvidia and Intel GPUs, as opposed to Nvidia's solution that only works on 40 series GPUs. Zooming in, I can see that enabling frame gen doesn't degrade the image quality compared to it off. It stays at the same quality as the image display by the FSR implementation. Unfortunately, it can't be used with other upscaling techniques. Some may find FSR lacking when it comes to image quality, but in this game I think it looks good. When looking at slow motion footage, we see the limitation of frame gen. Some UI elements are not rendered in the generated frame. In low FPS situation, this will fall apart but with a high enough base FPS, as seen on the screen now, when using frame gen, even in fast paced movement, it doesn't fall apart. So, AMD's implementation seems to behave the same as the solution developed by Nvidia. Now, let's move to Immortals of Avium, a game that can use both and see the performance difference, if any. First, Nvidia DLSS without frame gen. It looks good without any visual artifacts. We have around 60 frames. Let's enable frame gen and see if we can spot the difference when it comes to image quality. Looking at the same area, the steps, these look the same. When it comes to the UI elements, there are no issues. The performance increase is huge, but it doesn't feel that fast. While moving around, I am unable to see any artifacts or visual glitches. Let's now check FSR free plus frame gen and see how do the steps look like. I know that YouTube compresses videos and it's harder to spot any difference, but to be honest, I don't see a difference. There is a bit more shimmering in the trees, but nothing that can say that this is because of frame gen as it has it with FSR quality and no frame gen. What you see now on the screen is the area I used to compare the two frame gen technologies and see if there is any performance difference. I just ran in a circle and did a back dodge and compared the results between frame gen enabled and disabled. What I can't show, as I would need an Nvidia LDAT, is the latency difference to see which one is better. To me, both feel the same. Now we can see the difference in performance between the two. The AMD implementation leads in the average frames with 149.1 compared to Nvidia's 138.8. But when looking at the lows, we have 66.6 for FSR free frame gen, while DLSS frame gen delivered 111.3. I'm not sure why we have that. Maybe after burner doesn't record properly the lows for AMD's frame gen. So, does this mean that the solution from Nvidia is better? Let's have a look at Cyberpunk 2077. As you could see, in the sky there is a big amount of ghosting, and even if we disable frame gen and keep DLSS set to quality, we still have it. This is a DLSS issue with ghosting in high contrast areas and frame gen can't help. Let me show you that if I disable DLSS quality and use FSR 2.1, the ghosting scene in the sky is gone. FSR simply works better in this type of situation in this game as seen on the screen. I know people say that DLSS is the best, but believe me, not in all situations. Even Intel's solution doesn't have the ghosting issue that DLSS has. First, let's have a look at the sky with Intel's solution set to ultra quality. I use 0.5 when it comes to sharpening compared to 0.6 for the others. No sky issues at all, it looks really great, and the performance uplift is decent. When using quality, the same sharpening value as previously, no ghosting at all. Only DLSS had the issue. So you may ask, why show this? 
I showed all upscaling options in this game because DLSS frame gen can work with any upscaling technique available and this, next to the fact that it's available in more games, are the biggest advantages over AMD's solution. Have a look, if you have a 43 GPU from Nvidia, this is needed for Nvidia frame gen to work, you can choose the one that looks the best to you. I, for one, prefer to use path tracing with Intel solution over DLSS quality. It performs almost the same as DLSS, maybe a few less frames, but without the annoying ghosting. In fact, in this game I even prefer FSR over DLSS even though we have a bit more shimmering. And this is the best for a 40 series GPU owner as you can choose which one you want without being forced to only one solution. Does this mean that DLSS frame gen is the best? Well, from my point of view, no. As Nvidia chose to implement it in a way that requires hardware that is available only in the 40 series, thus not working on DLSS capable cards like the 20 or the 30 series, AMD's solution works on older gen cards as well, disregarding the vendor. The other question is, should you use frame gen? It depends. In order for it to work well, you need to have a constant frame rate of above 60 as in lower FPS locations you could see some artifacts because of the extra generated frame. Another important fact is the latency. I think that for people that play only single player games, no fast paced or are gaming on a console from time to time, the latency will be manageable as long as you have decent frames. For those that play competitive games and switch to single player games and try to use it, the game will feel less responsive and may prefer to play without it. Keep in mind that frame gen needs more VRAM, so cards that are close to maxing out the memory may exhibit issues when enabling it. Nvidia's solution tends to need more VRAM than AMD's. To end things, I think that if AMD releases an update for its frame gen solution and gives the user the option to choose between XESS or FSR, it will be amazing, but I highly doubt it. Let me know in the comments below which upscaling technique do you use. I'm curious as well, what is your choice if you have an AMD GPU in a game that has all upscaling solutions available? If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Hope to see you all in the next one.